Hi and welcome to Leitrim Daily. My name is Brefni Early and you're listening to episode 215 of the podcast. It's the Sports Roundup Show here on the show after a busy weekend of sporting action up and down the county and a little bit further afield. We'll be going into all of that later on. There's a bit of soccer, a bit of athletics, mostly Gaelic games, as well as a group of girls coming in to talk to us about the fact that they won't get to play their All-Ireland final, that they have qualified for on merit and really some ideas that they have in terms of how it can work in this COVID affected world. We have more on that later in the program. We're gonna start off with a thank you to our supporters here, uh, which is the local enterprise office in Leitrim and the show is brought to you today in association with them. And specifically what we'd like to talk about is, I suppose in this modern world, there's no advertising at the moment. People aren't spending money on that sort of thing. So our income is down. And what we've done is we've actually gone back to, I say we, I've gone back to my roots in terms of web design and building websites for people and we want to bring your attention to the online trading voucher scheme from the local enterprise office which gives your business if you have one or if you work for one the opportunity to build an online trading presence or upgrade what you have at the moment whether it's a website or whatever to help you develop uh, an opportunity to sell to people over the world wide web if you want more information on this you can get it direct from the local enterprise office that is at localenterprise.ie forward slash Leitrim but if you don't know the first place to start and you want to know more about it and you'd like us to help you develop that please get in touch we are info at leitrimdaily.com or hit us up on any of our socials we'd love to walk you through that process and maybe even help you do that and you can support the work of what we do by giving us some work in that area and we will continue to bring you what we can in the Leitrim Daily world as well. And now let's take a look at the sport, starting with national news. And there were two representatives of the county in action in the Women's National League and SSE Airtricity League over the weekend. It was a bit brighter for Pima United and Derv Laburn as they won 3-0 in Cork on Sunday afternoon, while Niall Moran and Sligo Riverside went down 3-0 to the same opposition, Cork City FC, on Friday night in Turner's Cross very disappointed night for the bitter red they would have been hoping to build on their two consecutive victories going into friday night's game but a disappointing result they face challenges against waterford tomorrow night in the showgrounds on tuesday and also over the weekend they will host dundalk in the showgrounds a tough game against dundalk obviously the reigning champions but waterford will be a team they will be looking to get something out of some big big games over the next few weeks as they hope to stay away from the relegation zone. In terms of Piemont and Dervla, uh, they moved to the top of the table. Congratulations to them. They're well used to this. It is only the second round of games, but Piemont are a good side, and when they get in on top in the league, they really don't like giving that position away. So we expect to hear some more good things from them over the course of the coming season. Now, in terms of local GAA games, we had a full round of fixtures in the senior intermediate and junior championships for men and women across the county over the weekend on saturday evening at five o'clock throw-ins there were results in the connacht gold senior football championship group one a oh, well in six points mohal ga club 516 while in balnamore balnamore shauna heslins 115 fina st collins 212 a draw in connacht gold senior football championship group two drum riley 11 points alan gales 214 Glencar Manor 210, Leitrim Gales 110. In the Intermediate Championship in Group 1, Ochna Sheelan 116, Eslin 210, a three point victory for Ochna Sheelan, while Balna Glare also had three points to spare against Drum Curran. 3 6 to 12 points they won that particular game. In the opposite group, Group 2, Carrigallan 110, Kiltubbard 7 points, a six point victory for Carrigallan in that game, while Anaduff had two points to spare over Gortletra. 15 points to 13. In the Junior A Football Championship, Gortletra 13 points, Carrie Gallon 117. That's a seven point victory for Carrie Gallon, while Glencar Manor had a single point to spare over their neighbours, Glenfern Kilty 2 8 to 2 7, the final score in that game. In the Junior A Football Championship, Group 2, Shona Heston's 111 to St Mary Kiltard's 2 8, so a draw in that particular clash, while the last adult men's game of the weekend. I have asked 316 and enough eight points. We're going to be talking to a few people taking part in those games over the next little while or so on the show. More on that to come. But what that means in terms of the the group tables and how it lines up for the quarterfinals. Group 1, Muckle finished in first place six points from their four games. Phoenix St. Collins on five points. Joint with Balna Moore but just edged it by three points on points difference 
while St. Mary's Kiltart finished with four points from their four games, and they take fourth place in that group. Ahoyle, of course, already knew they would be in fifth place in that group ahead of the weekend's action. Melvin Gales, they finished on six points alongside Glencar Manor in the group two, but Melvin Gales having won the game between them means they edge into first place in the group. Leitrim Gales, a very, very respectable first outing in the senior football championship for them. Only the one defeat coming at the weekend out of their four games, five points that they managed to tally, and Alan Gales, three points after they defeated Drum Riley at the weekend. Drum Riley themselves still on zero points from their four games. A very disappointing season for them. They will face Ahawillan in the relegation playoff later in the season. In terms of the quarterfinals, Mohull will play Alan Gales. Fianna St. Collins will play Leitrim Gales. Sean Heslin's Balnamore will play Glencar Manor in a repeat of last year's county final, while in a repeat of last year's quarterfinal, St. Mary's and Melvin Gales will do battle in the fourth game in that particular championship. In the Intermediate Championship, Drum Kieran, they topped Group 1, while Bornacula, Balnaglera and Achna Sheelan finished kind of in second place. They're all on four points, but Bornacula do edge it on that score and difference. Balnaglera in third place and Achna Sheelan in fourth spot by virtue of that win over Eslin at the weekend. Eslin themselves finish up in fifth place in the group. In Group 2, Gorth Letra topped the table from Drum Hair and Aduff, also on six points. That's all on score difference. So Gorth Letter in first place, Drum Hare in second, and Aduff in third, while Carrie Gallen will take the fourth and final spot in that quarterfinal. Kiltubbert finishing outside the top four. They will be in fifth and in that relegation playoff against Eslin. Drum Kieran will play Carrie Gallen in the quarterfinals. Borna Kula face Anna Duff in a really big local derby. Balnaglera and Drum Hare will do battle, while Ochna Sheelan and Gorth Letra will make up the final tie of the championship. Still lots to play for in the junior championship. We gave you the results earlier. Tables not quite forming yet, but Cluna Carrigallan on top and one side of the draw. Glen Carmanor there, thereabouts as well. While Balnamore, Shauna Heslins, Ahavas and St Mary's Kiltard doing the early running on the other side of the group. So we'll bring you a bit more on that maybe on next week's preview show when there's no senior action to talk about. We have a bit more time to go in-depth on that. In terms of ladies football, full round of games, as we mentioned, in all of the championships this weekend so far. One game conceded in the senior championship. St. Bridget's didn't field a team against Glen Manor, but there were two games which did go ahead. Balnamore, Shauna Heslins, 4-16, Kiltubbard, 1-6, and 3-12 to St. Joseph's, current county champions, versus St. Francis, 6 points. So a fairly heavy victory for them in that particular game as well. 15 points, I make it if my maths are correct. In terms of the Intermediate Championship, full round of games on Sunday morning, Kildra Gales, obviously no game this weekend. Mohull, three points. Drummer Hare, 1-8. St. Mary's Kiltard, 7-16. Anaduff, 1-9. And a fairly heavy defeat for Anaduff in that particular game. While in the Junior Championship, two games played on Sunday as well. Phoenix St. Collins, 2-3. Drum Cure at 8.13 in what is the clash of the first teams in that particular competition. Glen Carmanor, they made the journey across to St. Joseph's B. Glen Carmanor B, of course, as well. 4.13 to 1.3, the margin of victory there for Glen Carmanor, as they continue to be one of the teams setting the pace in that junior championship. What that means in the league table is there's a very definite divide in the senior championship with three teams duking it out for top spot. Balnamore, Shauna Heslin, seven points. St. Joseph 7 points and Glencar Manor on 6 points. Really, those three sides are the top three sides in the group. Kiltubbert are winning that battle to finish in the fourth spot and reach that semi-final. They have two points from their original four games. St. Francis also two points from four games. And St. Bridget's this weekend, they failed to field the team, but they have zero points from four games. They face Kiltubbert this weekend in a game that Kiltubbert will be expected to win to secure their fourth spot in that group. So interesting times ahead. In the Intermediate Championship, big win for Drummer Hare in Mohull. It really set the tone for how the championship is going to look. Drummer Hare, they're on top of the table. Six points from three games. Mohull also on six points, but with all their games complete. St. Mary's Kiltard, they have four points from their three games. They play Drummer Hare next week to decide who will be first, second and third in that group. All options still possible for those teams there. If St Mary's were to win heavily enough, they would top that group on score difference, but they would need a big win in that particular game. And Aduff, they are on zero points from three games, as are Kildra Gales. They do battle this weekend in an attempt to avoid the drop and to stay 
in that quarterfinal or in the semi-final I should say at the intermediate championship level and at junior level Drum Kieran they've played all their games they've seven points from their four fixtures so far Manor Hamilton they have five points from their three fixtures of course they drew with each other Phoenix St Collins two points from three games while St Joseph's B also two points from their three games and St Francis B still to get a single point from their particular round of fixtures so far uh, interesting way that's going to pan out really it looks like Drum Kieran and Manor Hamilton are running away with that division fina i'm a bit surprised by the result yesterday i didn't get to the game but i have seen them play twice so far and i didn't expect them to be that far off the pace against drum kieran because both sides had competed very well with glencar manor a single point between them or a draw in the case of drum kieran and manor so interesting to see how that goes over the next couple of weeks i think there's a kick in fina i wouldn't write them off just yet but there's two maybe three teams that look like they could challenge for that junior championship but it's all very competitive at the top of each of these tables in local soccer in the Sligo Leitrim and District League it was bad news for Manor Hamilton although more than expected for Manor Hamilton Rangers as they find out officially that they will not be winning the league this year unfortunately Carberry took on Cliffany yesterday in Sligo and a 4-2 victory for Carberry saw them get that one point that they needed to secure the league title uh, they smashed it they got all three and it means that Manor will at best finish second in the group at the moment they currently sit in second place with all the games played and just waiting to see how Car- how far Carberry will get ahead of them they have one game left later in the competition they do of course have their cup final next week the Glasshouse Hotel cup final and they'll be playing Cartron in that game next weekend in terms of athletics, some news in from the first race of the season for Carrick Athletic Club's sprinters. And there was wins for Alana McGuinness and Toyoso Fagbo in Athlone over the weekend. So congratulations to everybody involved with athletics in Carrick in that as well. Congratulations to Alana and Toyosi, and I apologise if I butchered your name. This weekend, I made the journey to Ballinamore to have a look at the Ballinamore Shauna Heslands and Fianna St. Collins Senior Football Championship clash on Saturday evening at 5 pm. An entertaining game from start to finish. It was the goals that kept Fianna in the game, scoring goals at very, very good times for them as they looked to maybe lose control of the game at certain times. Uh, a last minute, a last minute point from an Ushin McLaughlin free after a foul on Ryan O'Rourke in and around the box saw them secure the draw and the second place in the group that goes with it. Uh, We spoke after the game to a few people from both sides. I spoke to Tom Pryor of Balnamore and also to Fina's Ryan O'Rourke and his manager Joe Flynn. Tom Pryor, your thoughts after that game? Uh, Yeah, no, really tough game. It's a great game of football and uh, we need the strength Fina would have coming here. So, um, look, we're happy enough to get away with the draw and focus on the quarterfinal now. Strange kind of atmosphere coming into a game when both teams know they're already into that knockout stage? Yeah, there is, but oh, there's a lot to play for. Like, if we won, we would have been top there tonight, so um, I don't think the draw leaves us third and whoever will play will be ready for two weeks, I know. You have a couple of different options. It'll be Melvin Gales or Manor most, most likely in the, the quarterfinal. Anything to kind of worry about any, either of those two, two sides? Um, ah, look, we know Manor last year. We know their strengths and their forward line. And I've seen the Melvin Gales-Manor game last weekend. And Melvin Gales forward looks just as good, so... Um, yeah, either way, it'd be a very tough battle, but we're looking forward to it. In terms of the game today, you started very well. Two early points in either half, kind of keep that scoreboard ticking over just to get it rolling at the start. Um, what were your thoughts on, on how you played yourself in the game? Ah, look, Scran, I suppose, got a good start, so I was happy with that. And then, um, yeah, Phoenix backs fairly tightened up on us then. They got men back and they did well on us, so... Um, yeah, look, we're happy with the draw and we'll be ready for two weeks now. A lot of work gone in over the last couple of seasons. You topped the group last year, finishing third. Is that a bit of a disappointment? Um, yeah, look, you go out every game to win, I suppose. So, um, yeah, look, we were bet by point last week, draw this week. But, um, yeah, look, we'll be ready for two weeks and we'll be there to win it, hopefully. What's your view on the competition this year in terms of the, the number of teams at the, the level that you maybe set last year? There seems to be a lot of teams there, thereabouts. Yeah, no, very strong. Like, the five teams in our group, there was nothing between any of them. I don't think kick of a ball in nearly every game. And the other group's fairly similar too. So, yeah, if there'll be eight teams left and any of they can win it, look, looking like it. Nice and well done today. Thanks very much. Ryan O'Rourke, draw into the quarter-final, second place in the group. You've got to be happy with that. Uh, happy enough to finish second in here, yeah. Um, thought we, we didn't have it there at the end. and Luckily, we got that free at the end and just got the draw in here, so happy enough. Uh, that free in the end, it looked like you'd caught a mark just beforehand, which 
was the match winning thing when it didn't come from the referee's whistle? Uh, no, there was a couple of uh, kind of confusions with the with the mark today. I think there was some lads not putting their hand up and whatever, so there was a bit of confusion. But um, yeah, we got the free anyway in the end, so happy enough. How has the season gone for you? Uh, we're we're kind of happy enough now. Listen, we've come along. When you look at last year and stuff, we've we've come an awful long way. Where I think we won only one game last year against the group, and that was against Riley. Um, and we were we, we've we've won by a fluke of a goal that last year. Now this year we finished second against a lot of the top teams. So listen, we've come on a lot, but uh, we've kind of we've high expectations too. So um, you know we're kind of it's a mixed bag. We're both happy, but we're also looking forward to the business end of it now. A lot of people had you as the group swipping boys in this group of death, but you've kind of put, silenced a lot of the critics now. Top half of the table, second place, uh, puts you in a good position going into at least in the, theoretically it puts yeah. you in a good position. But the other side of the table has been so much of a mess as well. It's yeah. hard to tell even who you'll be playing later on in the, ah, in the draw. Yeah, finish. there's like Melvin Gales, Manor Hamilton, Leitrim Gales. Um, you know they're all t- tough. We, we've played them all the last last year. We played them all last year, and they were all very tough to play against too. So. Listen, people do talk about the group of death and stuff like that, but you can't write anybody off as you've seen. There's been big upsets already, and um, you know we're, we're not looking past anybody. It's a very young side you have here in Fianna. How much do you look forward to playing with this team over the next, not just this season for the three, or the three games, hopefully that you have left in your from your point of view, yeah. Yeah. but in terms of the next maybe five, ten years, is a really good promise of, of a bright future here for what is effectively a small yeah. rural club. Yeah, no, very young. I think Donald Donald's the oldest. He's like 26, so um, very young team. Um, but you know, lads have come on, lads have uh, come back out of the octagon in good enough shape. Um, you know, we've got a bit stronger since last year. So, you know, lads are getting on every year and getting a bit stronger. And you know, we don't we don't see ourselves as so much as a young young team that everyone looks at as the whipping boys anymore. So, um, yeah, very young and looking forward to the next couple of years and hopefully we get a crack at at the title. A lot of people talking this year about the whole argument between club and county. It's the first time really we've seen a club season uninterrupted through the summer, despite having the COVID thing going on in the background. How have you found that whole dynamic of, of club being put first and, and not being coming back maybe? Because you've had a few injury niggles coming back from county football over the last few years mm. that's affected your appearances with club. How yeah. does it feel like to be back kind of with a clean slate and have a good clean yeah, run well, to just, the championship? Like you said, just on a personal note, the um, last couple of years sometimes it's been kind of hard get coming back straight in the championship after injury or whatever and thank god i've had no real uh, hamstrings or any injuries so far so um hopefully it stays that way and like you said yeah it's good to get a good clean slate going into the club and obviously we'll see what the story is with the county afterwards but um yeah happy to get a good run at the club this year i suppose i'll have to ask it seeing as i have you uh, in terms of the county scene one crack at mayo that could be it in terms of a championship there's two league games still to be played as well uh, what's your thoughts coming back into that setup for a couple of weeks maybe towards the end of the year Alex, it's, it's it's going to be difficult for Terry to kind of get get things going when there's lads coming in at different times. I think the weekend we go back um, is the weekend of the semi-finals, so you're looking at it goes to half the panel being a train, and you know, and that's two weeks before we have to beat down, you know, and, and temporary nearly. So, um, look, it's going to be tough, but um, I suppose everyone's focused on the club as well, so it's hard. But uh, look, we're 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 keeping the thing ticking over, and hopefully we'll go in, you know. Uh, there's no real form or anything from other counties. We don't, you know, down and tip. So they're the two we're looking forward to any mainly. Uh, not so much Mayo yet because we want to stay in Division Three. Talking about form, you looked at an impressive form there this evening. Some nice scores, some nice catches. Um, again, that late mark we talked about. It's you seem to be on fire this year. Just are you enjoying your football? Yeah, I'm very much enjoying it. The weather here today was great, and the pitch was great here in Ballymore. Um, it's a great day for football, and you know that's the way we kind of play in Fianna. We play nice fast using the kick pass you know sort of football so when we do play well it, it, it'll be good to watch you know and we're, we're enjoying our football that way well, listen well done today and best luck in the Cheers. quarterfinals thank you Joe Flynn uh, tough game there today but you managed to snatch a draw probably deservedly at the end of the game yeah it was it was when we were coming here we knew that Ballinamore were a wounded animal after last weekend and um, they had a tough defeat against Carrick so they were always going to try and uh, get one over on their near, near neighbours and to uh, come out with a draw is probably a fair result and um, it was very much tit for tat and um, I think they took maybe a two or three point lead coming into the end and for us for our lads to show a bit of guts again to come back and get a draw we're happy with that and we'll look forward to the quarter final now in two weeks you scored a goal in each half both at very crunch time just as it looked like Ballinamore might be getting that bit of an edge on you and it really just sucked them Sucked the game back into the melting pot. Yeah, definitely, and um, <clears throat> that would I think in all of our games we we've, we've never let any team to get much of a lead on us. We've always stuck with the opposition. Then I suppose with the way it's gone now with the uh, water breaks and the, the halves, it's nearly turned into uh, quarters as opposed to two halves, four quarters as opposed to two halves. So we can oh, we were able to regroup 
at uh, each of those breaks and just focus on <coughs> what we need to do and where we could um, get it, get make some inroads into Ballinamore. I think we were under pressure with their kick out a lot. They were um, uh, going short for I'd say probably 90% of their kick outs and it took us a long time to get to grips of it. But when we did, we put the pressure on. I think that's really where we um, got a bit of change in the end to get to, to snatch the draw. In terms of the overall look of the championship now, second place secure in the group means you play third on the other half of the draw. That's likely to be Leitrim Gales or Glen Car Manor. They play in Manor Hamilton in about 20 minutes. Will you be breaking speed limits to get to Manor to watch that? No, no, definitely not. Um, both teams have their own uh, strengths. Um, obviously, you're, you're talking about the county champions of the senior county champions of 2019 against the uh, the intermediate championships, uh, intermediate intermediate champions of uh, 2019. So, both on their day are are, are um, very strong sides. I think I flagged it to you at the start of the year that I like to look to look of Leitrim and Gales. <coughs> they have a lot of strength there. Um, a very physical team. Fina have played um, had lots of battles with Leitrim and Gales throughout the throughout the years. Um, so they're going to be. They're going to bring a lot to any match, and again, Manor Hamilton, we know what they are. That they're people were writing them off last year, and uh, they proved everyone wrong. And I think there's going to be a massive kick in Manor Hamilton. I think um, they had a same, a similar type of uh, group uh, game in the group stages last year, and then they just turned it on in the quarter final. So I don't think that Manor Hamilton are, are, are uh, I wouldn't write Manor Hamilton off at all. So both teams are going to be tough, whoever it is. In terms of your own record now, this is your second year in outright management. You've been involved with senior teams for a long number of years, but yeah. uh, Carrick last year got to a quarter final, ended unfortunately with Melvin Gales here. Mm -hmm. uh, now you've put yourself back at that stage again this year with that nice draw, I suppose, from the second point place point in the group rather than coming in from a fourth place position. Yeah. Um, do you think that gives you an advantage? Um, I don't. I think the championship is so wide open; it doesn't really make that much difference. It's all. It's going to be on on the day. Um, like last year with Carrick, we were motoring very well, and on the day we woke up and it was a wet, miserable day. It suited Melvin Gales that day, and Melvin Gales got on top. So it's for Carrick, just if in, in the terms of Carrick, that the same thing could happen then. Uh, in terms of Fina, anything can happen. Like you just, it's it's on it's on their day. So. Um, I'd be just. I'm happy to get to the quarter final, um, and we'll see what happens again. Like you're talking, said to the lads, you're nine set training sessions away from a county final. Um, so that's the way. That's the way. There's three matches. We have to just put the head down and uh, take whatever or perform in in a quarter final. And make sure we're progressing throughout this championship. Happy not to have a local derby in the next round because you've had four of them nearly so far. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> With Leitrim Gales, I have my own uh, battles now that are going to be off the field with Leitrim Gales. Um, my girlfriend's from Leitrim Gales, so I'm going to have to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of, before you let, I let you go, in terms of the county board came out this week and said there was going to be nobody at the games. Do you wor worry about that? Does that bother you at all in terms of the manager position? Um, it, I, it didn't let, I didn't give it a thought. Like That's outside of my control. Um, that's the decision of at the higher powers. They've decided that, and I can't waste my time worrying about something that I have no control over. Um, if the clubs want it, yes, it's going to be disappointing. And I, like, from I think there is every ability to uh, social distance in the likes of Park Sean, but um, just looking at the, the case numbers today, was they were quite high, so you can see why you want to um, restrict the restrict the numbers. I think if anything, they might want to to start maybe condense the championship. I think two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. I think we're getting into danger territory. Hopefully we get the championship finished out. Um, so I might be looking at uh, going maybe one week after the quarter and one week into, into the semi to, to make sure that we get this championship finished. Okay, well, listen, well done today, Joe. Thank you. After that, it was straight out the road to Drum Riley, where Alan Gales were in town for probably the most important game in senior level this weekend. Alan Gales, the visitors, taking on Drum Riley with a place in the quarterfinal at stake. Not just a place in the quarterfinal, but the survival in the senior championship for next year as well that goes with it. Drum Riley, unfortunately, not enough on the day to win the game, beaten fairly soundly in the end, nine points to spare for Alan Gales in the end. A couple of goals and three late dismissals for Drum Riley really were the talking points of the entire evening. Once the second goal went in, Drum Riley never really looked like getting back on level terms, either in terms of numbers on the pitch or on the scoreboard. After the game, I caught up with Drum Shambos, Shane Walsh, and Connor Gaffney of Drum Riley. Shane probably ended up being slightly easier than you expected it to be today. Um, maybe, maybe so in the second half. I think the scoreline at the end made it out to be 
made it out to look like an awful lot easier game than it was. But uh, the first half it was nip and tuck for uh, the whole first half. Really, there was only a point or two in it at half time, and it was only maybe the few sendings off. I think maybe the second half space opened up and we created a few chances. And especially that when that second goal went in, uh, I think momentum maybe swung our way then. In terms of the first maybe ten or fifteen minutes, from Riley looked like they were really here for a battle. They, they started really brightly and opened up an, a nice early lead, but you managed to peg them back. It is, yeah. Uh, I think that's what we're trying to work on now as well, is not going behind early in the first half, because the past couple of games we went behind and then we're struggling then for the second half. But uh, just great to get back to level terms at that water break, and we didn't have such a big mountain to climb like we did in previous weeks. It seemed like they didn't really know what to do with your forward line. If they marked James, you would run right. If they put men on you, James would kick over a couple of scores. You just seemed to have to cut them open at will, in particularly in that second half. A bit more space there with the 12 men on the pitch. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. It was really telling now in the second half. But I think as a forward line, we're starting to click a bit more as well. Uh, probably just struggling to find a bit of rhythm in previous games. But, you know, it's a short championship and we didn't have much of a chance to get, you know, working with each other. But I think it's slowly starting to click. So hopefully it'll continue now for next week. And, uh, yeah. Quarterfinal spot now secure. Uh, you've got Mohol in two yeah. weeks' time. What are your thoughts on, on the draw and how it's worked out for you? Um, look, we're not going to uh, be too bothered by who we get. Like, do you know, it's 15 against 15. Um, whoever we get, we're just going to go hell for leather for the game. Do you know, it's one game at a time now. So focus on that quarterfinal. We've got two weeks to really prep ourselves and give it 100%. Uh, we're not going to get too panicked who we play, but really looking forward to it. I suppose on, during the week the county board came out and said they're all going to be behind closed doors. Tonight's game played probably in the smallest crowd I've seen at a championship game this summer. Uh, whether yeah. whether it was or wasn't, it, it appears to be the smallest crowd this summer. Do you think interest is going to build in Drumshambo? Are you happy with the decision yourself? Uh, no, no, I'm really disappointed with the decision uh, because as I was saying to you earlier, you know, especially the fact there's no county scene, people are crying out for these local club games and. Uh, it's really such a pity, especially as you knock out stages as things are getting more competitive and uh, th- obviously more interesting. It's a pity people have to miss out on it because it creates, you know, especially in these times, that bit of entertainment around the town and that feel-good factor when things are going well. So I think, yeah, really disappointed that they did make that decision, really, to be honest. Uh. Well, listen, that's for another day, I suppose, another discussion maybe later in the week. But thank you very much for having a chat with us and well done today. Yeah, thanks yourself, Brefney. Conor Gaffney, they say a picture tells a thousand words while your face is telling us a couple here today. How are you after that? Ah, look, uh, disappointed. We came here to to win and get into the quarter final, and it's a real sucker punch. We lost obviously well and then, but we felt like we were in it. The two goals really killed us and took the momentum out, and then we had one lad sent off, and from then there was just no coming back. You ended up with 12 players on the pitch, I suppose. Looking forward to the... I know you only haven't looked forward after today, but there's not a will game ahead in two weeks' time in, the, in a relegation playoff, or a couple of weeks' time at least. Uh, the three sending-offs might come back to haunt you at that level as well. Oh, look, here, three sending-offs, just going to have to take them now and get ready for two weeks' time against Ahawil. And we're not going to... We're going to go out all guns blazing and hopefully get the win against them. It's going to be tight, but we obviously have respect for them. They have respect for us, but... Look, it's, we're just going to have to get going over the next week or so and get everyone back and hopefully get an injury or two back as well and plough on and hopefully try and beat all Today Today's probably an unfair appraisal of where you've been all year because you've run a couple of teams close. I know Melvin Gales were lucky to get out of here with a, a win. Leitrim Gales last week, if there was another five minutes in the main game, might have been a different name on the, on, the winners, on the winner's side at the end of the game. But what's the, the, the future for the club, I suppose? It's, it's pretty bleak after today's game. Oh, look... Um, we still have a, another game to try and stay up in senior, so we're not down yet. Obviously, we have a small group of players, but geez, we're all here and we're all going to go till the very end. We're not going to lie down easy. Obviously, the, the results we've had over the last three or four games, we know we haven't just performed up to the standard that we, we want to be at, but look, hopefully there's a, a game in us and hopefully that's going to be in two weeks' time. Yeah, I know after defeats like today, it can't be easy to chat to us. Thanks very much. Cheers. Looking at the fixtures in the ladies' championships this weekend, most of the big clashes actually took place in the intermediate and junior championship. The clash of Drum Hare in Mohol and Fina and Drum Kieran were probably the ties of the round based on the fixtures. Unfortunately, both were scheduled for the same time in different locations and I haven't quite worked out how to be in two places at the one time. I made the trip to Mohol where Drum Hare had a good 1 8 to 3 point victory over the home side. After the game, I caught up with Charlene Tyrrell and Barry Lupton of Mohol and Dervla Moyles and Aaron McGoldrick of Drummer Hare. Charlene Tyrrell, a tough game this morning. Uh, 
it was. It put us to the test now. Um, you know, drummer here came down from senior last year, so we always knew it was going to be a tough one, you know. But oh, we're not out, you know. We have a semi final now to look forward to, so it's the only way is up, I suppose, after uh, today. Uh, obviously, <laughs> this year, uh, you're looking to maybe go one better than last year. Today, a little bit of a setback in that regard, but I suppose you always knew you're going to have to battle to win any championship in this county. What's the, the outlook now with the two games left and between you and that silverware? Well, look. We, more ladies are 12 years now without winning a championship, so we're a long time, um, you know, trying to win a cup. We won a league in between that, but that was a good few years ago. And they don't come round too handy, championship, county finals, like, so we know what work we have to put in and we know, you know, what level we need to be at. So I suppose a game like today is good. You know, you can't, you need a blip, I suppose, on the way there to really test the team, so... In terms of the, the team selection today, obviously a lot of girls unavailable for various reasons, injury, other commitments. How much of an impact does that have on the team? Look, we're very lucky this year. We're carrying a panel of 32 girls, you know, so we're lucky that we have the, you know, the standard of players on the sideline to call upon um, who probably only lack a little bit of, you know, the game practice really you know the competitive games when they come on but I think like at the moment everyone's really fighting for their position so games like today you know we're missing the likes of Dervla and Emma you know Kiva Cannon it gives the girls on the bench an opportunity to come in and prove themselves as well so you know we don't try and look at it as a negative point of view we're just trying and take all the positives really out of it all you know every team I think at the minute suffering injuries you know with lockdown and everything <laughs> and then we're back into like football every day <laughs> In terms of modern sport, I suppose psychology comes into it as well. So how much will uh, taking a defeat today against Drumahair, if you potentially meet them further down the line in a semi-final or more likely possibly a final given how form has gone, um, is it an opportunity maybe for them to come in maybe a little bit lackadaisical into uh, a final or do you think it won't really matter when you get to that stage, if you get to that stage? Um, I don't know. I think it comes down to the day. Do you know... Um I'd like to think we'd meet them again in the county final, do you know, and that's, and them winning today, I'd like to think that they would never go away and think, you know, we have to beat Namohal again, do you know, that's, we'll definitely use it to our advantage and we know we can play better than how we did today, you know, so. You were better in a couple of championship campaigns here in Mohol. What's it like playing home games for the first time, possibly in your career as a player um, in, in Mohol in the championship? For sure, it's great to have the home games, you know, and um, especially after not playing for so long. But myself, like I'm only back properly playing with the Mohol ladies the last two years, you know. So, and when you're looking at nearly the end of your footballing career, you're, you enjoy every game, the, you know, more all the time, and especially when they're at home. It would have been nicer now, sweeter to have the victory today. But look, you can't win them all, I suppose. I was going to ask you how enjoyable today was because on the scoreboard it didn't really oh, look great. Geez, every time you look over, like. I think that's the most disappointing part for me. Like, I missed two points myself, you know, from right in front of the goals. And to look down, and we've had such high-scoring games, to see three points on the board, it's a, bit, a little bit unbelievable, you know. But um, I suppose you miss, you know, Dervla in there today. She'd be a key player. But, like, look, we just have to get over that. I'll have to get more accurate, I suppose. <laughs> hard luck today. Thanks for talking to us. It's never easy after a defeat. Ah, look, we've... We've given ourselves a hard time now, so we get the negatives out of the way and onwards and upwards, I suppose. Barry Lupton, a tough game this today this morning. Yeah, very tough now. You know the way when you're up against a, a senior team that's been winning titles for the last couple of years and dropped down division, it's, it's always hard, you know, sort of way. But um, look, as I say, it was a good game, enjoyable game. We'll, t we'll take a lot from that game. We, we, we'll probably go back now to the drawing board now for the week or two ahead and take a more positives than negatives out of that game, so we will. What are the lessons you'll be taking from that? It's just don't give the opposition more time in the ball like we did today. It's um, it's it's work 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 more for each other than 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 a team. You know, in a way, like um, they have a few old players that we'll probably need to mark up more the next time. Not give them as much room like we did today. And you know, but again, they're 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 senior team. They're senior quality. We 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 have to we have to uh, we take it take it as a as a, as a a learning curve, you know, sort of way. It flashes there, probably in the last 10 or 15 minutes, you really seem to come into the game and we're able to cut them open at will, just maybe shoot and let you down a little bit towards the end. At the end, but too late for that to be happening. Do you know, at that stage, we were chasing the game. Do you know, if, if, if we were ahead and then you popped them over, 
it's it's good work. But when you start to pop them over at the wrong time and then you're chasing the game at that late in the game, you know, things go wrong. I don't want to be talk, like, talking about excuses after games, but you were down a lot of players that you've had uh, this season so far. A couple of injuries and a couple of girls are missing through other commitments. Yeah, yeah, we take four, at least probably five players out of the, the team that played the last day through injury and other commitments. But, as I say, we, we have a good panel there of, of 32, I'd say. So, like, the girls that come in that did the job today did it excellently. Do you know what I mean? So, as I say... Everyone has excuses, but when you have a team that when you still have a start in 15, it shouldn't be excuses. Sometimes you learn more in defeat than you do in victory, and I suppose coming into today's game, you had three wins from three, uh, a little bit of a setback today, but you're still in the semi final, you're still probably going to finish top two in that group, and potentially a semi final, and maybe even a final to come. Does a defeat today kind of maybe galvanise the mind of the squad and help you kind of get them back in and motivated with those two big crunch games to come? No, not really, because the girls are very hard on themselves, even in a bit of win. Even with a win. If the, I, I find the last couple of games we, we won well. Girls still talked about the mistakes they made, not about their winning, what they've achieved on the day. So, like, the girls will reflect on that all week, and they'll probably co- we will come back training Wednesday night with a different mentality and a different drive for, to see us out for the rest of the year. Of course, you're here in the final last year in the intermediate grade, and you'd be hoping to go one better. Is that what in this remit of this team? Can you take from here in, a, in another game later on in the season? Look, as I say, we'll have to do a homework if we get that far. As I say, we, we take each game as a time. Every, every game that comes with lies in front of us, we have to take it what, 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 what puts in front of us. So, as we look at it, we look at the, the next game ahead of us, and we won't look, we won't think about Drummer here now for the, for the rest of the remainder of the year until we have to face them again. So, our next, our next uh, up. Um, a team that comes in front of we'll be talking about them. Hey, listen, Barry Lupton, thank you very much for chatting to me. Thanks very much, Brittany. Derval Moyles, captain of the club, but unfortunately in a position to play today. What's it like watching on in a game like that against one of your top rivals in the championship this year? It's it's quite tough watching not being able to play. Obviously, it was a great game. You know, both teams, huge, massive work went in. Um, I'm also very proud of the girls. Like, they just put everything into that today. In terms of your own championship season, why why can't you play today? What's the injury? I have uh, tendon in my foot is inflamed and tendonitis in it. So, will you play this year? Hopefully, that's the plan. <laughs> it's uh, it's slow to to recover, but I'm getting there. I think. Talk us through the game today from the start because a very low scoring affair, and not yeah. much really in it, and you kind of pulled away then probably in that second third quarter maybe mm-hmm. of the game. Yeah, um, I think we like we knew going into it, it was going to be very tough. Uh, both teams had one and two sweepers at times so very defensive which uh but you know it it was i think the work rate was what what got us over the line in those that last quarter yeah what's the the next couple of weeks for you so you've one game left in the group stage and it's a case now of going through to maybe a semi-final and possibly having another tussle with mohal mm-hmm. later on down the line do you read much into today's results in terms of how a, a future pairing between you might go um yeah I, well not too much. You don't want to get too ahead of yourself, but uh, like I think that the work we put in today will stand to us going forward. Obviously, next week is a big game again, and back to zero, start from from the beginning again. How have you found the intermediate grade versus the senior last year? The the competition is still huge. Uh, you know, we have a lot of younger players coming up, so I think it's really really helpful for them to to get kind of eased into a bit, and it's it's made it easier for them coming up as well. Okay, well listen, well done today. Thank you. Erin Goldrick, what's your thoughts after that game? Uh, tough, tough game. You know, we knew it was going to be tough coming up. Um, I think Mohan are flying uh, in Jamaican Championship this year, so um, and it was really tough. I think both sets of defences were solid today, so it was really hard to get the scores. Um, and we were just, we were lucky with some of ours, um, and Mohan had some very unlucky ones that didn't go over, thankfully for us. So we got a few scores that got us over the line. I suppose most neutrals would have looked at this game as an early indicator, maybe of a final. Both teams unbeaten going into today's game. Without putting too much pressure on you, <laughs> uh, how are the the thoughts after the game now in terms of where the the rest of the championship lies? Yeah, um, yeah. I suppose Mohol to us definitely would have been one of the the, the top teams. But um, we we've had we've had tough games. You know, Kildare our first first round was a very very tough game again. So if we have to come across them again. They're they're still contenders. Um, we haven't seen Carrick yet, but I know they've done. They're doing well too, and they're an easy team to get over. So it's it's hard to call, really. Yeah. I suppose the way the fixtures have been laid out this year, you had a bye the first week, which yeah. meant that you've been playing catch up. You're now level with Mohol 
with with that extra game to play so gives you the advantage to top that group yeah. uh, albeit four teams going into the semi-finals in terms of how this championship has fared out given the way last year panned out because last year it was a disappointing one for the club given senior status yeah, and it just yeah. didn't quite come together for you yeah yeah so it's great like uh, disappointing as you said to to, to be re relegated last year but to to be here and to be in, so competitive in, in this championship you know it's great and with so many younger girls coming through this is just excellent for them this this, this championship you know they're getting good hard games and uh, great experience and it's bringing them on you know really bringing them on so it's great yeah we're really happy with the the level of competitiveness and how we're doing in this championship of course last year you had two teams senior and junior yeah. and now you've got one intermediate side yeah. and it really seems to have galvanized that team just to get together as yeah, one unit exactly and and, and bring on some some younger girls and uh, with the older ones kind of hanging in there as well <laughs> well listen well done today that's luck for the thank champion. you at senior level, a lot of one-sided games at the senior grade this weekend. After their victory in their clash, I caught up with Vanessa Glogley of St. Joseph's to talk about the season so far and how they've been finding things in Ahavas and carry on. Vanessa Glogley, uh, game this morning against St. Francis, a fairly handy win in the end, but talk us through the game. Yeah, I wouldn't say a, a handy win in the end. Uh, St. Francis, they're always going to be difficult um, oppositions right until the very end and they definitely were that um, but yeah I suppose we got off to um, a slow start but picked things up and um, yeah delighted to get the win in the end Talk us through how the game developed from your point of view um, Yeah look St Francis they've got some fantastic individuals all across the field like their backs are very strong midfield and then they've a couple of um, forwards up front that are always going to be a threat so um, I suppose from our perspective we needed to keep those threats at bay and uh, focus on our own game I think over the last couple of um, games that's something that we're trying to do now is just focus on ourselves and not worry too much about the opposition if we get our own game right um, you know we're happy enough with that then. In most sports a game like today where you're already pretty much guaranteed a semi-final spot might be an opportunity to try some younger talent coming through but of course you can't really do that with a second team you'd lose them from that grade how much of an inconvenience is that to maybe get miss out on those girls getting a test of senior football? Yeah look it's it's unfortunate especially for the girls themselves I suppose sometimes because they're not getting that um, chance at senior football but the junior team it's um, it's really really important especially when you have the numbers it's so so important that every girl is, is getting football because I suppose you do have your, your couple of subs but there'd be a lot of girls that wouldn't get a game if we didn't have that second team so um, it's, it's really really important for us and those junior games there's some fantastic teams in that competition so it's going to bring on those girls um, and look we'll see where we go if we have to use subs and it means taking them away from the junior team. Every girl is chomping at the bit to get a chance to play at senior. So it works both ways. Uh, but yeah, it's, it can be unfortunate for some girls if, you're, if you are holding them off just for the junior team. Of course, three championships in a row up to now. We know all about Glen Carmanor as opponents for you in the last two finals. But Balnamore have come from almost from nowhere, really. A semi-final appearance last year, but didn't really put it up to you in that encounter. They drew with you in Carrie Gallon two weeks ago. They beat Manor Hamilton last week. They've really announced themselves on this stage. How much of a threat are they now? And it's really a three-horse race. Yeah, I suppose um, there's there's definitely other teams there as well. Like I wouldn't say Kiltobert are completely gone either. Um, but Ballamore, they were definitely a strong team. I, I know myself. I definitely would have rated them high even last year in that semi-final we didn't have it easy and um, the scoreline might have reflected differently so um, yeah look they, they're definitely putting it up to the likes of ourselves obviously Manor Hamilton last week so they're going to be there or thereabouts and obviously their their eyes are probably setting the prize now as well so um, yeah look there's it's going to be an interesting uh, couple of weeks now. Of course Manor Hamilton's your final game next week uh, you may also face them twice in the coming weeks depending on how the permutations fall at the semi-final stage uh, what do you do knowing that next week is, is almost a dead rubber in terms of progression to the semi-finals although it will have an impact on where you finish and, and who you finish up, up playing in that semi-final yeah, I suppose we haven't looked anywhere beyond the group stages um, and I really, really mean that we don't think about a semi-final or anything um, past a, a game every weekend. So um, this weekend we just focused on St Francis and now this weekend in our preparation for training we will focus on Manor Hamilton um, and on their strengths. But um, yeah, we, we definitely won't look beyond um, next weekend. That's, that's our number one focus and we'll see where we're at after next weekend and then we'll focus on... Um, going off that but next weekend is, is a big task ahead of us and we know that already 
obviously we're here in Ahavas, there's a good atmosphere here at the men's match, it's their first game of the campaign which is kind of bizarre to think that you've played four games, some of the senior men's teams have played five games and are out of the championship after five games and Ahavas only getting their season going today. Yeah, it's it's mad to think it. I know they got, were a bit unfortunate. Um, the first weekend were all well and um, that game didn't go ahead and then they were due to play on the Duff there a couple of weeks ago. So, uh, yeah, look, they're putting in a good display today. So it'll just be delightful for the lads to get off to a good start as well. It seems like they're going to win this game comfortably. So, um, yeah. As well as that, there's a good community spirit here, particularly around the whole All In For AINA campaign that's been a, a major success for such a small rural part of the country to come together in the manner in which they have is, is phenomenal. Yeah, look, Yvonne Ina's mother was a past player of St. Joseph's. She was actually on our 2012 um, winning senior championship team as well as Sandra. Um, Joan is heavily involved and Breed, of course, and then the late Eamon. So um, the community spirit has been absolutely unbelievable. Um, just seeing so many people like yourselves, uh, the publicity that we've got, just everyone rallying around. And yeah, the club um, and county scene and even all around the globe, um, the support that has come in and just lovely words of encouragement for Eina. Um, so it's it's really really good and uh, we just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that supported us like all the games um, and the gates all the funds that came towards it and um, it's absolutely fantastic and it's been very much appreciated by the Brady family and by St Joseph's Club just to see so many people rally around us. Well listen well done today well done on everything the club have been up to for the last few uh, weeks I know everyone in the community has been involved in that. Yeah thank you very much Brefni. And the final game of my weekend was in Ahavas as they finally, finally got their season up and running on the pitch. Uh, by the first week, they were handed a walkover in round two and it's taken till the third round of the junior championship to have Leitrim's last first team in action. They had a fairly straightforward victory against a second string from Anna Duff and after the game, I caught up with the Ahavas chairman, Noel Short, but also a very, very happy Joe Cox from Anna Duff Joe Cox, that's a, a tough morning. Well, I suppose it was, but uh, from our point of view, we had, what is it, 15, 16 lads here today that all played football today, and it, realistically, it is about that for us. It's about giving our younger lads football because we're not getting it at senior level, you know, so they, they have to have an avenue of playing football now. It's tough, our fans are really, really good. You have to, you know, they've punished us so many times going forward. We were, I have to say, we were very happy with our attitude towards the game, we tried our best in it. The young lads got huge experience. Like that's the first team. So that's how the first team against our second team. And like to some of us no spring chickens either now. So it was good. Look, I, I really enjoyed it. There's no point in me saying that. My first game of the year. And uh, as I said, if we're going to training, there's, there's positives to take out of it. We have a game, I think it's against Daha Willen next, and we'll be going hard for that to see can we do a little bit better than today. Do you know what I mean? So the scoreboard they were just a little bit better. They had Seamus Sweeney, a couple of little footballers out there. there. Do your heart good to watch them, you know. So. Most people, I suppose, nowadays would know you more as a coach with the county teams or the, rather than as a player now. I suppose that day has kind of sailed. Do you enjoy getting back out and having a run yourself? This is this, There's nothing compared to playing football. I, I can just testify to that all the time. It is. It's, it's a difference. It's a competitive. But, like, we're trying. We have a good few older lads there, and we're trying to... Uh, get the older lads to, to sort of talk to younger fellas and we're, we're probably still doing a little bit of coaching in the game, do you know what I mean? And it, It's the only thing we can do to try and bring these lads on and it's fierce and drive. My God, if you couldn't, a Sunday morning out playing football, where else would you want to be? Like, it is brilliant. What's the mood like in Anadolf? Obviously, victory last night, still third place in the group in terms of the intermediate championship. Uh, happy with that or, or a little bit of disappointment? No, the, the performance is the most important thing last night. I don't care, I, I says it to a couple of lads going in, it was more important after the last game that we performed last night. You could know coming in to w- the week of training. Like, there was a little bit about them that they, they, they really were, were, were focused in on it. And it wasn't there probably the week before. Uh, Warden was focused, and you've seen what happened. And Bornacula next, like, I don't need to say Bornacula really yet, it ended up three years ago or four years ago now, down to intermediate. So, you'd be hoping we perform if we can get consistently performing. We have some really good footballers, but it's about getting them consistently performing every day do you know like playing with a bit of guts and a bit of freedom and enjoying the game I suppose back to it like Can you see any of the lads that feature today maybe pushing for a place on that starting team in the, in the intermediate grade? Well, Kenny definitely has to be He's, he, was, he, was, he was only okay now I suppose he played a game yesterday evening. there's two or three of them but there is only there, there is only two or three of them there we have a lot of young lads and the old lads are really old you know what I mean so there's not going to be the younger lads are, are, are only in this year we're missing maybe five or six nearly every week in this junior lads been away and injured and stuff so it's we'll be hoping that we can pull it all together for next week or the week after whenever the next game is and yeah get them get them get them 
I, I can't see us. I can't see too many of them. I wouldn't take too many of them if I <laughs> myself. You want me to be very honest with you? Maybe Kenny, the few lads that is already there. Uh, Stephen Murray done really well. Now he's marking a really a young corner forward there. That was a very good footballer. You'd have to say that Stephen would have to have a shout there. Who else was there? Young Jason Moore played well. You know he scored three or four points there and worked hard. So look, that's back to Carlos the boys the next week in training and see how they step up to it. You know so. Well, listen, hard luck today, Joe. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Noel Short, it must be nice to actually be playing football here in Ahavas. It's been six weeks into the, the campaign and it's your first game. It's our first game, is right, yeah. Look, I'm sure the lads were all really looking forward to today and to actually get out there and, and as I say, and get on the field and get a game under their belt. Obviously, we had, we had conceded or got a concession in the first round and to get out today and get a game is great and, and, and get moving on it, yeah. What's your thoughts or what the club's thoughts in terms of how the game went? Obviously, fairly m- wide margin of victory in the end, but a tough battle. Well, look, look, a tough battle. Honestly, you never expect anything else from Anna Duff. You're not going to get anything soft. Uh, a tough battle, certainly, but I think the boys kept their composure. We, we tagged on the scores and look at the all add up at the end, and it was, t- it was a good game. We were quite happy with the way things went, but there's tougher tests to come. Talking of tougher tests, uh, neighbours Clune obviously floating around in this junior championship as well, and another first team in the f- shape of Glenfarren Kilty as well, motoring quite well on the other side of the draw. In terms of the fixtures, how do you see the, the next couple of weeks going? What's the what's the hope within the club? Well, look, we're we're, we're just concentrating on our next game now. We're going to Carrick on Saturday evening uh, for our next next game, and we'll take it from there. We'll just try and keep on win win every game is our it'll be our aim, but we will take one at a time and. Come quarterfinals, we'll, we'll see where, we're, where, we're, where we are. I suppose there'll be a bit of disappointment last year, having dropped down from that uh, intermediate grade. There's a proud history here and I've asked senior champions in the last 20 or odd years or so. Um, it'd be nice to kind of maybe take that step back and, and win that junior championship. Is that? I presume it's a goal, but is it an achievable goal within the club? Oh, we'd like to think it's an achievable goal. It's, it's certainly our aim. It's something we'd be, we'd be aiming for. We'd like to be up there and playing intermediate. We, possibly in the in league, we may come across some of those teams, and we're well capable of, of, of performing against them at any day. So, you know, we, we'd like to be up there playing intermediate. But as I say, we have to get from junior first, and that's our that's our aim. And hopefully, hopefully, we can make it happen. So. In terms of the, the general club life and the COVID situation, obviously the county board came out last week with an announcement that games are going to be behind closed doors and they did say in their statement probably semi-finals and a final of a junior championship. Now I don't want to uh, put any pressure on you but if that was to pass and you were to reach that stage of a semi-final in this competition, uh, would you see that being a problem? Like It wouldn't have been a problem here today with the numbers that were here but as interest grows, would you have a, a problem with that or do you see? Do you think the county board made the right decision? Well, uh, personally, and I think from a lot of people have been talking to even since in that, we would be more or less of the opinion now that I'd like to see the numbers, we'll say, even over to curtail it to the 200. I'd rather have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever, 60 people from each club there than having nobody. It takes, you know, it takes a little variety of, of advice and from a bit of support from both sides to make the atmosphere. And I think the players would expect that as well, you know, like to play in that kind of an environment that's what it's about it's you know so i would like that they would possibly not go a full blanket ban on supporters you know because it just becomes more like a, a challenge game it takes i think it takes the support to, to to create the atmosphere it does so you're quite happy as a club here to take on the responsibility of of the distribution of that 50 or 60 tickets because it could cause huge problems locally for club officials as well. I think that's part of the reason yeah, for that, it. That was that was certainly was part of the reasons. But then again, I think that's like I think I'd say most clubs would be prepared to, you know, come up with that or, or, or sort of solve that problem for themselves. Like if if you have if you're allowed 60 tickets. I guess I don't know that there's probably different ways maybe you know through players or through membership or whatever way you distribute the tickets it would be up to the clubs maybe to come up with the better if that's you know the general uh, would say the general idea or the general uh, response to it is that, that you're allowed the, the, the players allowed the supporters to go yeah. I suppose that's a discussion for uh, later in the week maybe for another day but in terms of the football g- good to be back up first game out on the pitch in, in terms of games actually played first win second on on the board but first on the actual field of play so you got to be happy with the, the weekend Oh yes we're certainly we're, we're happy with today's performance and as I say look, we're just going to concentrate on next weekend now and try and get on push on and, and, and we have Carrick coming up 
that's that won't be simple either. Nothing, none of, none of these games are simple. So we'll 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 be we'll be hoping to to, to push on from here and see how it goes. All right. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And finally, something a little bit different. During the week, we got a message from a group of girls in St. Clair's Comprehensive School. Their senior football team had, by right, earned their place in an all Ireland final earlier in the year. But when COVID came and everything locked down, so did their all Ireland final. The girls were bitterly disappointed at the time, but fully understood the circumstances behind it. And now, when everything seems to be coming back, opening up a little bit, and they're back playing football with their clubs... They want to know maybe why the LGFA have decided that the game won't take place. They came in to me yesterday afternoon for a chat and to explain what exactly happened and what they're hoping as an outcome for this standoff between themselves and the Ladies Gaelic Football Association. We're in a kind of uh, almost a deja vu situation with this particular team because for the second time in three seasons this group of girls have got to an all Ireland final and through I suppose a cancellation and a concession two years ago the game wasn't played the girls were awarded the final and this year due to covid the lgfa at national level have come out and said the game will not be taking place and nobody's going to be awarded the title so while it worked out in your favor two years ago i know you would have liked the opportunity to play in an all Ireland final i'm joined in today's show by hannah johnson emma mclaughlin rachel conman and rachel mcpartlin and we're going to have a little chat about the circumstances behind it maybe what would they would like to see happen over the next couple of months or weeks or maybe some at some point in the future to get that game played. Girls, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Now, there's a lot of voices, so we'll try and identify ourselves. Uh, I'll ask you kind of by, by name maybe over the next couple of minutes as to uh, give your contributions to the show. But I want to start, first of all, with the actual statement that came out from the LGFA a couple of weeks ago now in terms of what been, has been said about all of the competitions they've cancelled because it's not just this competition that didn't happen leagues from won't be playing their national league games and at all levels all inter-county activity has been stopped with the championships to come later in the season so uh, the lgfa reiterated its extremely tough decision originally taken in march to cancel the remainder of the pps all Ireland championships for 2020. the statement goes on to say we will not be revisiting decisions relating to the health and safety of our members which remain wholly relevant when we consider these matters closed. Now, it does go on a lot more in terms of that, but I suppose since then, the boys' A final has taken place between St. Joseph's, Rochford Bridge and the CBS, and that was played in mid-July. And I suppose there's no movement from the LGFA in order to play the girls' versions of those particular competitions. I know there was also, I suppose, a lot of um, discussion about the senior cup final in the rugby. I know Hannah, you probably are aware of this. Uh, it was brought up in the Dáil or in the Senate a couple of weeks ago. It got a lot of derision. Where are you girls? Because ultimately you were in an all Ireland final that you qualified for on merit. Second time in two years and you're not going to get to play the game. How do you feel, Rachel? You're the one that contacted the show about it. What's your thoughts on it? Rachel, my partner, that is. What's your thoughts? Uh, well, obviously, we were very disappointed back in March, uh, but you know we knew because of the unprecedented circumstances, we like understood that the LGFA had to cancel the matches. Um, but seeing then uh, a few weeks ago that statement come out, particularly when the boys' final was played, um, it was kind of frustrating on our part, but also very disappointing uh, because we understand yeah the LGFA have cancelled the national league, but they still had many games left to play. We have one game, uh, both teams want to play it. We're not asking for it now, but the inter-county season is supposed to start, I think it's on the 14th of September, uh, and we will play any time after that, next year even. Like We just want confirmation from the LGFA that they will play it. Like, both schools want to do this, uh, particularly because we have a lot of leave inserts on the team, um, and we see no reason why, why they have taken such a, a closed stance um, to this. Let's talk to some of the other girls. Emma McLaughlin, what's your thoughts on, on the situation? Um, I do think the LGFA made a rash decision, but I completely understand their point of view and how difficult of a position they have been put in. And I understand that there's so many games and so many other football teams in their in our position. And I just think that it's so disappointing and it's so frustrating for us um, because of what happened two years ago, but just 
this year we felt like we have we have the opportunity and we should be able to play in this final. Um, we are willing to play it behind closed doors. We don't need a big fuss made. That's not why we're coming on here. We just want to play the final. And we've worked hard for this and we know the other team have too. And I just think we need to be given the fair chance. And the fact that the boys also got to play, I don't think it's fair. I know they're completely two separate situations, two different organisations. But I do think the LGFA should just maybe look again and maybe hopefully um, renew what they've come out and said and possibly give us this chance. You're, you're right in so many things you said because it is very different to the National League where there was two or three rounds plus knockout stages. It's a one game, one venue, behind closed doors. Uh, can you see where the LGFA have made this decision from those? Hannah, do you understand maybe why the LGFA have come to this decision? Yeah, like it's completely understandable. Like it's a pandemic for God's sake, a, compl- a global pandemic. But at the same time, as you said, it's one game. Like club championship is back, football is back essentially. Like could we not just, you know, give us a chance to play this literally one game? Do you know, do you know what we're saying? 60 minutes, of? that's all yeah. we want. Rachel, let's Rachel Connell, let's bring yeah. you into this. It's going to be confusing with the two Rachels in. But Rachel, let's have a chat a moment about your experience of the football that has been back so far. There were guidelines set out. Can you say honestly, hand in heart, that every club has followed those guidelines to the letter? Well, I suppose every club does their best to follow all the guidelines, and we all, before matches and training, we all renew our status online. So, safety precautions are being taken. So we think that before, if we were to play this game, we could do whatever needed to be done to ensure the safety of players and managers and everything. As we said, it could be behind closed doors. Um, Our club championships and everything, they're all running smoothly. So we don't see why one match would be different to the rest. I suppose we must remember also that maybe eight or nine counties in the country have really had maybe one, two cases, have less than yeah. five cases in the last couple of weeks. So it doesn't even have to come to here. It could be played in any one of yeah. those counties. Yeah, Everyone just travel there, yeah. play yeah. the game. What are your next steps? Um, you've obviously started a petition. Rachel, maybe you might tell us a bit about the petition you've started. Uh, yeah, so we started a petition with the other schools, so St. Joseph's. Um, and uh, along with the two senior A teams as well, they're going to start a petition. So we've all come together um, and we're looking for as many signatures as possible. Obviously, this is our first interview and we'll be looking for many more. But we've made Facebook pages, St. Clair Senior Girls Gaelic. And we're just looking for the LGFA, like regardless of county colours, even with the 2020 campaign that is this year, they're pushing for equality in women's in sport. Uh, and their slogan is, if she can't see it, she can't be it. And the LGFA aren't letting us play, so how are we supposed to be seen if they're not giving us the opportunity? Okay, now I want you to do a little bit of exercise, maybe as a group. Let's say, for example, the four of you were in charge of the LGFA right now, okay? And we're going to come up with a fictional situation where there's a team from Kerry and a team from Derry to play a game. Right? Both counties, relatively low counts, similar situations to your own. But we are in a global pandemic. What do you do? in that situation? Um, I guess if we were in charge of the LGFA, mm. like if I was in charge of the LGFA, no disrespect to the LGFA or anything, but I wouldn't completely rule it out completely, especially, like, it's completely unknown, unknown territory, nobody knows what's coming around the corner, so don't, com- don't um, terminate all ties to the future. So what I would do is, I would say, okay, at the moment, Maybe not, because we're still um, looking for cases to go down. But in the future, as Rachel said, um, uh, county championship is back on the 14th of September. Yeah, we say? think it's around the 14th of September. So obviously they have guidelines yeah, in place exactly. now for that. So. Yeah, so obviously Derry and Kerry, two different counties. I think wait till that date at least. And then after that, see, can you come up with a date and a venue somewhere I don't know, maybe in the middle, try yeah. to avoid maybe Kildare and an awfully in leash. But oh, <laughs> yeah, given the current, yeah, given the current yeah. situation. But um, yeah, let them play that behind, even literally behind, behind closed, closed doors. doors, just as long as they get, they've worked so, uh, I know that's a hypothetical, but they've worked so hard for yeah. this. So um, yeah, just l- let them play it after that date in as safe a way as possible. Anyone else have any 
yeses or noes to that? that I just happen? think um, what one of the most important things is not to make such a closed dis- dis- yeah. decision. Yeah. To make it more open and give a chance to the players. Put, we'd put if we were in charge of the LGFA, we'd put our own. Um, our own perspective and we'd look at the yeah, players exactly. perspective yeah, like and for think us, about all the training we like started the, sept- last September training yeah like, so. and it's very mm-hmm. rare to get a chance to play in an All-Ireland final so exactly. to not just completely yeah. shut that down I did do a little bit of research it's only happened I think five times at any level at senior or junior level that a Leitrim club or a Leitrim school should I say has got to an All-Ireland final two of them have been you yeah, yeah. So neither of those games are now yeah. likely to yeah. be played so I think it's such a huge achievement for a, a school in a small part of the country and I think I, I completely endorse your support your campaign to get the game played I think there are steps again maybe not necessarily in the immediate future even mm-hmm. if it's at Christmas holidays yeah, or even exactly. next Easter yeah. I think the, the very nature of school sports given that you're probably all maybe not necessarily in Manhattan because you're all ten, it's a big catchment area but schools and, and clubs and I guarantee there's probably girls from Fermanagh there might be one or two from Cavan or, or whatever mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that are in the school and yeah. you, you will never get that group of players together no. again. Exactly yeah. with such yeah. a it really is such a special group because yeah, this we've all it's bonded, the same like, group like, yeah. that was in the All-Ireland final yeah, the last basically time. basically the same team. Yeah. We'll never have it again. Yeah. It's, it is heartbreaking for you and I sincerely hope that you get the best of luck with your campaign uh, with your petition. I think common sense Hannah your suggestion pretty much hits the nail on the head of what I was kind of expecting you to say. It, it doesn't really make sense to rule it out completely, yeah. although it's, it's part of a blanket ban, I get that. Yeah. But you're asking for one small exception. Um, you're not asking for them to go back and play all the, the other competitions. Minutes, that's and that's all, yeah. One game, one venue. Yeah. Do it in as safe a way as possible for everybody. It can happen at elite level in all the sports in the country at the moment. So. Here's hoping you get a bit of luck with that as well. Girls, thank you very much for dropping in. And I wish you the very, very best of luck with your campaign. We will be sharing the the link where people can subscribe to that. Yeah, so we're asking people to please, please sign the petition. Like, not just that this doesn't just involve us. This involves all sports. Like, we're really trying to push equality with women in sport and you could really it would really really help us to get a lot of signatures so okay, well, out of the may out of the mouth of teenagers in leisure at the moment the very best mm-hmm. luck to the four of you to hannah emma and the two rachels for coming in and having a chat with us i wish you the very best luck all of the links will be in our descriptions and in our um, all the notes on the show wherever you're listening to this thanks very much girls. thanks Thank you. thanks for having us And that, folks, is it for another week here on Leitrim Daily. Thank you so much to everybody who spoke to me over the weekend and who was so hospitable as we made our way around the grounds on Saturday and Sunday. We will be back on Friday with a preview of next week's championship action. I know it's a break in the senior football championship, but there's plenty of sport still to take place over the next seven days. We'll talk to you on Friday.